Hey everybody, it's Coach Ryan. Uh, this is the How to Hack Stress live webinar. Sorry, I'm a little bit late. I had a couple of technical difficulties with uh, Facebook Live, but I'll give a few minutes to uh, give everybody a chance to jump in if they want to. Um, I will probably post this on our YouTube channel probably tomorrow because I'm not in the studio. It's a little bit easier for me to uh, make the transition from Facebook Live to YouTube using the computers at the studio. So this will probably be up on our YouTube page tomorrow. Um, but I'll give a couple more minutes because I'm a little bit late again. I had some technical difficulties, uh, but now I'm up and running. Obviously I'm not at the studio. I'm at my apartment right now. So a nice change of scenery for me. Uh, good evening to you if you're watching this live. There you go. I see your legs. How you doing? Um, so hopefully this this session will be about mm, 20 minutes ish, uh, maybe a little bit longer if I get talking a lot and I'm sort of long winded, uh, but about 20 ish minutes. Um, and if you have any questions, um, please type them in the comment box and I'll try to get to those questions if you have them. Um, when I get done at the end of the session. So I'll wait another couple more minutes and then I'll go ahead and get started. Hopefully everybody's having a good day, good week so far. Um, hump day, Wednesday is kind of the halfway point of the week. So I like to say in the live workouts, halfway point, no turn around now. So May is going by pretty quickly. Um, so I'm very, very shocked at how fast time is moving. So, by the way, I'll wait another minute or so, then I'll go ahead and get started. Again, this should be about, mm, like you say, about 20 ish minutes or so. Even if I talk a little bit more, maybe a little bit longer, but I plan for it to be about uh, 20 minutes, 25 minutes something in that area so there you go hey Tatiana I see the smile all right so hopefully everybody's doing good feeling good hopefully you'll take something out of this uh, hope to give everybody some strategies and uh, how to what is stress and ways to identify and how to deal with it so um so I'll go ahead and get started. It's uh, almost 5.05. Um, so the name of this webinar, uh, How to Hack Stress. Um, what I wanna emphasize from the get-go is that stress is normal. Like stress is something that we all deal with. Um, some science about stress uh, in a 2019 study, uh, more than three quarters of adults reported physical or emotional symptoms of stress, such as headaches, feeling tired, or changes in sleeping habits. So I just point that out to you is to say that stress is normal. So we all deal with it. Um, and stress could be a good thing, which I'll talk about in a little bit. And uh, I'll try to relate some of the OTF colors or heart rate zones that we have, blue, green, orange, and red. Um, to try to illustrate some of the levels of stress, but stress is normal. So I wanted to kind of take the opportunity to kind of put that out there right out the gate is that stress is normal. Um, when we are stressed or when we deal with stress, the body releases two hormones, cortisol and adrenaline, okay? Um, cortisol is like the mood, uh, motivation and fear um, it can alter the immune system and it can affect our digestive system as well. The other hormone, which a lot of us are probably a lot more familiar with, is adrenaline. So when we get that shot of adrenaline, we have an increase in our heart rate, increase in our blood pressure, increase in our energy. Um, so that's kind of the sympathetic nervous system or the fight or flight response. So those two hormones, cortisol, adrenaline, those are linked uh, or those are the hormones that are released by the body when we are stressed. Now, there are two types of stress, chronic and acute, okay? Um, 
and I'll just go over some of the examples of what acute stress is and chronic stress. So acute stress, so something like delivering a presentation, which is what I'm doing right now, um, trying to handle a new situation, first day at a job, um, you know, adapting to a new schedule and a workout, you know, exercise, you know, those are examples of acute stress and acute stress can be good, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Some examples of chronic stress is financial stress or a demanding job, caring for a loved one or a family member who may be sick, um, divorce or some type of stressful long-term relationship with a significant other, um, death. Um, those are things that are chronic stressors. Um, and we'll, we'll get into some ways to deal with that and you know try to identify our triggers before we get to that point. Some of those things uh, are unavoidable, like the deaf one, you know, that's a fact of life. Uh, but those are examples of chronic type of stress. Um, the acute stress, acute stress can be good. You know, a big one that, you know, we're in the business of is exercise. So when we are stressed, again, the two hormones, adrenaline and cortisol are released. Um, and it's meant for emergency action, fight or flight. Um, so when these hormones are released, we get that short term increase in uh, stamina, strength, awareness, focus, uh, energy, all those are good things. So acute stress uh, can be good. Like I said, exercise is that perfect example of acute stress. Or you, you, you hear some stories about um, some people doing some very heroin things uh, or superhuman things. Like they see somebody trapped under, you know, a heavy desk or, you know, a rock or something like that. And, you know, their fight or flight system kicks in and they're able to lift that object off the person to help save that person. You know, that's acute stress. That's the fight or flight response. So acute stress can be a good thing. Now, but prolonged stress, you know, chronic types of stress things, but so prolonged stress, stress over time can lead to certain health issues, high blood pressure, heart disease, diabetes. A uh, big one, uh, I'm a personal trainer. Uh, when I was personal training, uh, doing clients one-on-one, -on -one, big thing that I heard, you know, from chronic stress, weight gain, you know, I got this new job or the stressful relationship, whatever the situation may be, that chronic stress, uh, was a big factor leading into their weight gain, which is why they came to see me, uh, sleep problems, headaches, uh, skin problems. Uh, menstrual cycle problems or reproductive system problems, those are all things that can be as a result of chronic stress. Uh, so now that we got that all out the way, what acute stress is, what chronic stress is, okay? How do we deal with it, okay? First thing we do is we want to try to acknowledge stress. So how do we do it? So too much stress is dependent on the individual. Everybody is different. Uh, just like in our workouts, everybody is different. There are different levels of fitness. So there are different levels of threshold or a threshold of stress. Everybody has a different one. So everybody is different in that regard. So what's too much, I can't really tell you because that's dependent on the person. Um, a good place to start uh, is to try to acknowledge your symptoms of stress. Um, so what are the symptoms of stress? So trouble concentrating, uh, headaches, anxiety, anger, you know, stomach problems. I know personally, uh, when I'm a little stressed, uh, I love to eat. And that's kind of, you know, the mantra that how a lot of people who know me well, or even if you don't know me very well, you know that I, I, I like to eat. Um, one thing that happens to me personally when I kind of get stressed uh, is my appetite kind of goes. Uh, so once I know that I'm, I'm not very hungry, uh, something's going on for me. Uh, uh, 
fatigue, decreased sex drive, skin irritations, uh, muscle tension, teeth grinding. Some people are teeth grinders, you know, when they're stressed. Uh, apathy. Uh, so finding and acknowledging uh, some triggers or indicators of your body being stressed out. Uh, that's number one. Step number one is acknowledging stress. And those are a list of things to help you to identify that you're being stressed. Um, so that's key. Uh, keeping a log of your stressors, your triggers, this can be helpful as well. So this is where journaling can be an important tool, uh, not just with dieting or exercise, uh, journaling how you feel, uh, what triggers, or how your body is feeling. Uh, that is important as well, and that's a good way a journal can help as well, not just with fitness and exercise and nutrition, okay? Um, so what I wanna do, we acknowledge our triggers. We acknowledge some symptoms of stress. What I wanna do is I, I made this little drawing here so if you can first with the acknowledging um, our triggers of stress, our symptoms of stress, let's also acknowledge the uh, artistic skills of Coach Ryan here. So what I did was I made a little bell curve and I tried to relate this bell curve to the Orange Theory heart rate zones. This is OTF and we all know those heart rate zones. So what I tried to do with stress in this presentation is to make a curve and make the corresponding colors of our heart rate zones to kind of explain this a little bit better. Um, blue zone. So blue zone is that warm up zone with OTF and our heart rate zones. The blue zone here represents too little stress. So there is an optimal level of stress for everyone. Too little stress uh, may be a result of inactivity or a lack of appropriate stimulus to the body, which is not good, okay? So the blue zone, we don't wanna spend most of our OTF class probably in the blue zone. Uh, if we do, uh, something's going on probably with our heart rate monitors or we're probably not getting that much out of the workout. So too little stress, again, inactivity, lack of appropriate stimulus, we don't wanna be here in this bell curve of stress, okay? Now, the green zone here, this is where I made my little smiley face here. The green zone, this is somewhere between being super laid back here in the blue zone and being exposed to fatigue or experiencing fatigue. So in that green zone in OTF, heart rate zones, green zone, that's base pace, challenging but doable. That's where we should spend the majority of our time in class. That's what we always say. So same idea here, somewhere between laid back and fatigue is kind of that optimal level of stress is where we kind of want to be. Now, after we pass over the middle, we get into the orange zone, which is overload, okay? So once you get here, this is where you start to experience some exhaustion. Uh, and it, we, we will all get there probably. Uh, that's Tiz's life. Uh, but once we start to get past overload and then get into that red zone, which is where we don't coach you, okay? That red zone, if not managed, if this overload in the orange area here is not managed, this is where you can get to burnout or breakdown that red zone here. Um, so again, I tried to relate the OTF heart rate zones to this bell curve of stress. Like I said, we don't wanna be too laid back. We don't want overload or burnout. We don't want too much of that, just like in Orange Theory. We don't wanna go splat point, splat point, splat point. Our goal isn't to have 50 splat points in OTF class. Our goal, optimal level of stress, your smiley face, Okay, most of your time should be in that green zone. So somewhere between laid back and overload is that optimal level of stress that we should try to strive for. So hopefully you, know, you all appreciate my artistic skills and uh, my ability to try to relate the OTF colors to this presentation. So 
you're welcome for that, okay? Um, so, uh, acronym, all right, we've identified stress. We've identified that too much is bad, too little isn't that great either. So we identify that we want to try to be in the green zone, that optimal level of stress. So a stress action plan um, is what I want to try to give to you all. Um, and this acronym, STRESS, uh, I'll break the steps down. So if you have a pen and paper, you may want to write it down. Uh, but every, every letter in the word STRESS uh, has a step. So the S in STRESS, so stop. So acknowledge your triggers. Acknowledge that you are showing signs uh, of being stressed. So stop, pause, and try to pinpoint what were those triggers. Maybe it was a conversation with someone. Maybe, uh, I, I don't know, maybe, you, you know, your, uh, you know your, your dog starts barking at you too loud, whatever. So stop and pause the trigger, the trigger uh, to figure out what that trigger point was. The T, take a deep breath. Personally, this is what I love to do. So whenever, you know, a lot of times this happens when I have conversations with people and, uh, or if I'm thinking about something, something's stressing me out, um, taking a few minutes just to breathe. I say it all the time to workouts, deep breaths. That helps me personally a lot. So that T, take a deep breath. That will help to calm that fight or flight response, that sympathetic nervous system response that your body has with the adrenaline running through your body. So stop, take a deep breath, okay? R in the stress uh, acronym, reframe. So by reframe, Maybe think about your trigger or what triggered you to have this response. Is there a positive way that you can look at this trigger? Uh, Candace, I'm a glass of this half full type of guy. Um, when I'm thinking about something, I like to stop after I take that deep breath. Uh, what's the positives of the situation? My big mantra personally is it's better than the alternative. So. I'm thinking about this situation that I'm in or whatever situation I'm in. For example, the COVID situation. Um, you know, I don't want to be in this situation, but the alternative, I could not have a job. I still do have a job. I'm still am being paid somewhat. Uh, the alternative is I could have none of that. Okay, the alternative is I could not have a job. Okay, I could be you know, evicted, if I couldn't pay my rent, whatever. Uh, I stopped to think about what's the alternative, you know, better than an alternative. And that's one way that you can reframe whatever triggered you is to try to look at something at the positive. What are the positives? Can this be spun into something positive? Okay, the E uh, in the stress acronym, establish a plan. And I'll go over a couple examples once I finish the acronym. But once you stop taking a deep breath, try to spin it in a positive light. What's your action plan? How are you going to deal with it? I personally, I like exercise. Um, if I need to kind of de-stress, uh, I like to exercise because of the endorphin release, the feel good um, chemicals that are released by the brain into the body. Love it. Um, but it could be something different for you, which I'll get into in a little bit. Uh, once you establish that plan, the first S or the second S, I should say, there's three S's in stress. Step into that plan. Execute that plan. So once you identified your trigger, you have your action plan, do it. Okay. And then the last S is something that you hear me say a lot in the at-home workouts is smile. Okay. It may seem silly, it's simple, but smiling, it's calming, and it helps to relieve endorphins. So I say that in the workouts for a reason, like it starts to hurt, starts to burn, smile, smile through it. Again, it helps to calm you, it helps to relieve, it helps to release endorphins, all right, to relieve yourself of that stress 
of that burn that you may be feeling in the workout, smile through it. So in stressful situations, don't forget, smiling is a big, uh, a big tool that you can use to help combat stress. Um, now, what can you do as potential action plans uh, for stress? My big one is working out. Obviously, I, I love the workout. So whether I have a gym or not, I'm going to find a way. Uh, I'll make room in my apartment. I'll go outside. So even if I didn't have the studio or gym, I would find a way to exercise. But that isn't the only way. Okay? You can listen to music. Music that makes you happy. That's another thing that I do personally. Um, I, am, I live alone, so really nobody can attest to this, but... I am uh, very big on how, it doesn't matter what hour of the day, night, whatever. Uh, I, I'll put on my headphones because I want to be courteous to my neighbors. But a lot of times throughout the day, I'll put on some headphones and just vibe to some music for hours almost up to. Uh, I love listening to music that helps to calm me down, makes me happy. Uh, depending on what type of music it is, it could be calming music. It could be music that makes me want to move, makes me want to dance. Uh, but again, that releases endorphins that makes me feel happy. Um, you could talk to someone. So talking to someone via, there's a lot of tools out there now. Um, I know we're all kind of in the stay at home order or stay at home kind of mantra right now. But there's a lot of things that you can do. Zoom, FaceTime, calling someone. Uh, Facebook just came out with their, their groups thing, uh, which is kind of like the, you know, group conference, uh, call deal like zoom. Uh, you could talk to a professional, uh, even if you can't go to their office, a lot of virtual sessions that you can do, you can talk to someone. So there's a lot of tools available to you to where you can get in front of someone, even if you're not physically there with them, you can get in front of someone virtually and talk to people. So take advantage of that. Um, at home spa treatments. Um, I personally am, am not uh, uh, a uh, proponent of that, uh, but there are a lot of people who are. Uh, so at home spa treatments, uh, learn a new hobby. Uh, so learn something new. Uh, I, I've been reading a lot and been trying to perfect my fitness craft a little bit more. So I've been looking at a lot of different things, uh, learning new things in terms of the fitness industry to try to get better for when we do open back up. Uh, but there's different, maybe, maybe you want to try to learn a new skill. Um, that could be something that could help you throughout stressful periods. Uh, meditate. So a lot of people I know will meditate for, you know, 20, 30, 40, maybe even up to an hour or more. Uh, meditation, yoga. That's one of my new things personally is uh, I have uh, an app that has a different workouts and a section of the workouts is yoga. So actually a few days ago I did my first session and I thought it was great. Not only did it feel good in terms of recovery for my body. But when I did this session, I turned off my TV, I turned off all the music that I had, and I was just doing the yoga routine. And, I, and it was good to be in the moment and to feel the breath and feel uh, my body. Uh, it, it was great. And uh, I, I really love that session. I did another one yesterday or the day before yesterday and I probably will do another session of yoga either tonight or tomorrow uh, but if I know there are a lot of yoga fans out there um, I'm becoming a new fan personally um, let's see Jeannie the calm the calm app is awesome so I've never used the calm app but uh, I know Jeannie just wrote it on the comment section if you all have and uh, speaking of that if you all have some suggestions on different types of things or different things that you do as far as uh, how to deal with stress or some of your own action plans please feel free to comment thank you Jenny please feel free to comment to let everybody else see it and uh, give everybody else some ideas about 
uh, what you do. Um, the car map was just mentioned. Uh, so I, I would have to, I'll have to take a look at that. Um, cause you're not the only one that I've heard that about, uh, getting into nature. So getting outside, uh, getting into taking walks. I know a lot of people who have been taking a lot of walks and a lot of runs within the last couple months. Uh, so getting in tune with nature will help you to deal with stress, uh, planning your schedule. So that's a thing where time management is huge for a lot of people. So planning a schedule, sitting down, working on and planning a schedule for a lot of people, excuse me, for a lot of people that will help deal with stress as well. Uh, because sometimes dealing with uncertainty uh, and procrastinating, that could lead to stressful situations and stressful times. So um, again, for me personally, the new hobby, exercise, and music, uh, those are things that are very, very helpful for me. But mo what's most important, find something that you like. So just like I said in uh, the basics of exercise uh, webinars, in terms of building your routine, finding what you like to do. If you don't like to run, don't run. If you don't like to row, okay, don't row in your own routine. Now, when you're in the studio, we'll, we'll make you roll a little bit. But uh, when it comes to building your routine uh, in terms of dealing with stress and formulating an action plan, make sure that you find something that you like. So like I said, I like music. Uh, I like to exercise. I'm a newfound proponent of yoga. So finding something that you like to do as important to you. Um, what I'm gonna do, once I get done, uh, and close the video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna post a graphic. So I have a graphic, um, an activity that basically has two boxes for you to fill out. Um, what's the stressor that you had in a day and then how you dealt with it. So I encourage you to uh, use that activity. I will probably do it and post it on my story and I will maybe post it on the, uh, the comments in this video as well. Um, but again, uh, hopefully these things, a little basic, you know, basic web shot or workshop tonight. Um, but hopefully a uh, couple big points. Stress is normal, number one. Number two, finding that optimal level of stress. So let me pull out my graphic again. All right. So again, let's appreciate the artistic skills of Coach Ryan one more time. So again, Blue Zone. Too little stress, laid back. Uh, we want to be in that green zone. So somewhere between laid back and overload. And we definitely don't want to get into that burnt out, that red zone team. Uh, and then your action plan. So stress. So if you have a pen and paper, if you want to hear it one more time, I'll go through that acronym one more time. So the stress action plan, stop to pause and pinpoint what are your triggers. Once you do that, take deep breaths. That will help to calm that fight or flight response. Reinforce, or reframe I should say. So can you spin it in a positive light, whatever your triggers are. Establish your action plan. So whether it's your music, your yoga, meditation, whatever, establish that plan. Step into that action plan. That's the second S and then smile through a team. Just like I say in the workouts, smile. It's calming, it brings out endorphins, smile team. A simple, spot, simple smile can uh, go a long way. So um, that is all that I got. I got it was a little over 20 minutes. Uh, so if you have any questions, you can post them on the comments uh, after I get done. Like I said, I'm going to post the graphic on the comments of this video. So once I close the video, the video will post after a couple minutes and I will post your image, uh, your activity image once it's done. And you can go ahead and do that. I encourage you to share it on your story. I'll probably share mine. Uh, it's really simple. And uh, if you have any other questions after I close this, um, let me know uh, and I'll try to answer it as best as I can. Again, I'm not an expert. Uh, but, uh, hopefully that these few things that I talked about tonight will help you out a little bit. 
And hopefully, just to throw it out there, hopefully uh, we won't be virtual for too much longer. So hopefully in a couple of weeks we'll we'll have some concrete plans to get this studio open. So, but it's been good to see you all virtually, uh, whether it's the at home workouts, seeing you all post on our page. Uh, it's been great team. So uh, stick with it. Uh, we're almost uh, at the finish line. We're getting there through this. So, uh, so I'll go ahead and end the video. Like I said, if you have any questions, comments, feedback, whatever, you can post them and I'll get to them uh, once the video posts to the actual Facebook page. And this will be on YouTube tomorrow. Once I get back in the studio tomorrow, that's when I'll go ahead and post this video on the YouTube channel. So, so I will see you all tomorrow, next time. So tomorrow doing the at-home workouts at noon. Uh, so hopefully this helped and I will see you then.